and teach you about the intelligence in the body that gives life to your body. So we all know about placebos. What most people don't realize is they go, oh, it's just a placebo effect. Um, but when you have someone take nothing, they take an empty tablet and they get better. Um, and you can measure it scientifically. Okay, you can, you can do the scans, you can take blood and this person no longer has any disease. Then that says mind influences matter. That says your willpower, your hope, belief, love, intention hardens into fact, can harden into fact and harden into a genetic, biochemical, physiological and neurological change in the human body. Placebos are so well established and so well acknowledged that drug companies are spending inconceivable amounts of money every year um, on double blind and triple blind studies <clears throat> and with some of these studies that just do your own research in the public domain some studies the placebo is as effective okay as effective as the drug so, I, in hospital, I have always known, see, since I was a little kid, I've always known that belief affects our health. I've always known, since I was just a little boy, I've known belief will dictate whether or not I'll get sick or not. I, I'd go to primary school and a kid in the class would sneeze. And I remember so often I would go, oh no. Okay, so this is the thought. You probably do the same thing. You go, oh no, I'm probably going to get sick. That kid's got the flu. And that oh no, in that response, and we move into worry or move into fear, as soon as you do that, you knock the body out of homeostasis. You start to impede upon the intelligence in the body that's giving life to the body that creates life that regulates your cardiovascular system your digestive system reproductive system it does this all beyond conscious awareness i saw wayne dyer dr wayne dyer speak just before he passed away and he stood on stage and said that intelligence in the body that loving intelligence in the body that gives life to the body and beats your heart and regulates the systems of your body and grows your fingernails without you asking for it to do any of it. It does that for us all equally, regardless of the color of your skin, your sexual preference, or your political views. So when I was in hospital, I tuned into that intelligence and connected with love and faith, faith that my body could heal and gratitude and love for just being alive and being able to breathe. And I didn't know it then, but I know now that I instinctively just started doing what's known as mental rehearsal. I instinctively would put myself into <clears throat> a state akin to sleep and use my mind, my imagination to create a future, to dimensionalize a future and rebuild my body piece by piece. I would mentally rehearse lying on my back on my weights bench and lifting the weights up. And like, I mean, I could feel the cold steel bar. I could hear the sound of it. I could feel it. There was touch involved. There were all the senses involved through imagination, but I was just 42 kilos lying in a hospital bed tubes hanging out of me everywhere looking like a deformed freak um, but I would do this religiously I would mentally rehearse jogging and feeling my feet that little compression that you get as your shoes hit the bitumen and picture the day picture like you know the sound and the sky and the birds and, and the, there's no pain in my body 
So I would mentally rehearse it over and over again, over and over again, the future that I wanted, where I'd healed myself. And I emotionally connected with that experience. So I mean that I produced an emotion ahead of the event, an emotion that was congruent with that potential. Because the body does have limitless potential to do things that medical science can't explain. Little did I know back then, and see, I walked out of hospital um, less than two weeks after critical head injuries um, and breaking my spine, multiple, L1, L2, L3, shattering my spine, crush fractures. Um, I walked out of hospital and healed very, very fast. I had no pain at all in my back, no disability whatsoever. And then 2015 comes around <clears throat> and... Um, I meet this guy called Joe. It's Joe Dispenza. And he's got this book called You're the Placebo. Actually, it's here, it's here somewhere. Anyway. Um, and in it, he lays out the science step by step and references step by step all the science, all the peer-reviewed published papers, all the literature to explain how mind influences matter, to explain how a healing can take place. And in it, he goes into great detail about mental rehearsal. Um, that you can, you know, you can mentally rehearse something and bring about a physiological change in that person, but they actually haven't done anything. They haven't lifted a finger. They haven't done anything. But they've visualized it. So there's, there's science that shows that this creates... Changes in the neurological structure in our brain ahead of the event. And then the brain obviously can signal the body epigenetically. Which means when you start living in that future from a place of, of love. Okay, I'm, I'm not talking about doing it from separation. I'm not talking about doing it from fear. I'm not talking about from doing it from the voodoo curse or maybes or ifs. I mean owning it and being being a giant, like, like knowing inside yourself that you are going to get through this, that you are going to create a different life, that you are going to create health and a healing and come back to love. And that when the emotion, when the amplitude of that emotion is great enough and it's matched with that intention, you start to signal different sets of genes in the body epigenetically. So epigenetics, um, I mean, the latest science is saying that like 90% of our genetic expression is happening epigenetically, which means above the gene, which is from the environment of the cell, which is obviously you think, feel, choose, act. There's emotions you bathe in, environment you're in, your environmental toxins, etc. These all bring about these epigenetic changes. And obviously, genes create proteins. Genes code for proteins. And proteins, the shifting, moving shape of proteins is the expression of life. That's what it is. Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about that, that the, the dead body, the cadaver has the proteins there, but it doesn't express life because they're not moving. They don't, they don't shift. So... There is a wealth of science out there to say that mind influences matter, that the placebo can impact healing. And I've personally spoken to countless uh, scientists, molecular biologists, PhDs, neuroscientists, survivors of cancer, disease, injury, Nurses, I've spoken to lots of nurses actually from like the last 14 years. I seem to manifest nurses and have great chats with them, and they will so often echo that when they're looking at the patients and they they can see someone come in with a huge amount of willpower with far like severe injuries, but they can tell that they're going to heal and get out quite quickly, and others come in in that state of separation and fear, lack of belief, faith in themselves, 
with a, a fairly minor injury, but they just stay. They just don't seem to heal. They just don't seem to get better. So we've talked about how mind influences matter, the epigenetic um, side of healing. But all disease, all disease, all damaged tissue, so from injury and is a lowering of frequency in the body. Uh, my mentor taught me this um, straight out of hospital. Um, he said to me, Damien, all disease is lowering a frequency in the body. And when you understand that every single cell in your body that comes together to make up the organs and the organs collectively work together, synchronize to create systems and then create you, like your, you the human, the, the whole body. Um, it begins with those cells, those 50 trillion cells, and every one of those cells is made up of atoms, and every single atom, according to quantum physics, according to very established laws, is 99.999999% nothing physical, nothing at all. It's frequency. It's vortices of energy. So your emotions are obviously your energy in motion. When you feel a certain emotions like high vibrational emotions connected to the true self like gratitude and love and compassion, the electromagnetic field of the human body can be measured nine meters away by the HeartMath Institute of California. Okay, they can measure this and it, it can go all the way to just centimeters. When you move into the fight or flight response, it, you pull from the field. You pull from the field to create chemistry, to turn on the hormones of stress. And now your field, your electromagnetic field is just centimeters away from your body. So reason this with me, if love is a higher frequency and you are maintaining that higher vibration and expressing that emotion, which is what I was doing through gratitude of being alive, rather than going into the pain and the oh, woe is me, I just kept coming back to love and kept coming back to love and love and love. Then when you raise the frequency of every atom in your body, it will affect the cell. And if you affect the cells, okay, then they will affect the organs and the systems and affect your body. And if all disease is a lowering of frequency and you raise that frequency, then you can have a healing. And Dr. Joe um, just echoed word for word what my mentor taught me. Seven years before I met Joe, seven or eight years before I met this man. Um, so these two incredible teachers that came into my life, they never met each other, um, both echoed word for word this idea. So we've got the influence of mental rehearsal. We've got obviously willpower and hope, faith. We've got epigenetic changes, epigenetics, how signals in the environment of the cell are causing the upregulation of certain genetic sequences that code for proteins that are the building blocks of you and me. Um, then we have emotion. Uh, my mentor John said to me that it's love, and I know it to be true. When people say to me, "How did you heal yourself, Damo?" I'm not. I don't care about the allopathic medical paradigm. There's nothing in those notes about love, but love heals. Love does heal, and it does that by raising the frequency of the matter of matter in your body through entrainment. Okay, as that incoherent frequency in the body is brought into coherence and brought in, in line with love then it raises the frequency of matter and when there's coherence in the body you can have a healing and then the last point I'm going to touch on here is the opposite to that love that gratitude which is very hard to be in when you've got the, the white coat with the PhD and the stethoscope telling you You'll be in pain for the rest of your life. You'll never heal. You're going to have permanent disability. You're going to have problems articulating yourself, memory recall, you know, 
just the list goes on. When someone of authority says that to you, the emotional charge in the body, um, it's frightening. And that response is the fight or flight nervous system. This is the survival reactive state that we move into that pulls from the field. Because you've got to run. You've got to fight or, you know, you've got to run somewhere or fight someone. So it takes energy to create chemistry. And that fight or flight response, when you move into fear or you move into stress, worry, really worried, turns off your immune system. And um, as you've heard me say, if you go in for an organ transplant, you actually, the doctors will administer the stress chemicals so that you don't reject the foreign body, the foreign tissue coming in so that there's less chance that your body's going to kill it because it's, it's not you. Okay, so the stress chemicals, their presence in the blood also causes the blood vessels in the gut to constrict, pushes blood to the arms and legs so you can mobilize energy, but it shuts down growth and maintenance. Okay, so the growth and the maintenance of the cells in your body has been compromised and your immunity that you need has been compromised as well. So mind, in summary, mind affects matter. Um, the, go, there's a book, it's quite old now, read Molecules of Emotion. That's a good one. Or The Biology of Belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton. Um, mind is always influencing matter. Just, just think about it for a second. When you have a sexual thought, right, and you go into that sexual energy, pretty quickly you have a change physically in your body. That came from a thought. That came from seeing something attractive, something sexy in your environment. And now there's a change physically in your internal environment. So when the brain is releasing neuropeptides, okay, you start thinking thoughts. The brain's releasing neurotransmitters, but it also releases a neuropeptide that travels to the body and it signals the cell. It, it docks with the cell wall and then a gene is expressed. So whatever it was coded for, the gene is expressed and then the gene makes a protein. So the mind-body connection is hard science. Um, emotions are energy in motion and can be measured. So when you lower the frequency of matter and bring uh, incoherence into the body, the redundancy of that cycle will cause disease. When you keep bathing in the stress response and you keep living out of your survival state, over time, the incoherence, the brain stays in a very incoherent state as well that you can measure through EEG, causes the body to break down. Um, and then obviously fear, the, the fear response and just being in that fight or flight state, you're shutting off growth and maintenance and you're turning off your immune system. So what's the answer? It's not easy to stay in love and believe in yourself and have faith in the face of really frightening news um, from a doctor or something like that. It is it takes a lot of conviction. So it's not a, this isn't a simple thing, but I'm just speaking my truth about how I did it. That the intelligence in the body that gives life to the body is what heals the body. That's what heals the body. It's that intelligence. And in, um, I guess I tuned into that intelligence and lived in that state. And my experience has been that a lot of what I was told never came to pass. The only thing that came to pass was that, that loss of sense of smell. And that's because there was a huge fear response, like, a snapshot, a photograph of my brain. I'll never forget the fear when they said, you will never smell another rose, the beach, a lover, you know, woman's perfume, basil, Italian food. I love Italian food, you know. You never taste ever again. It's, it's gone. Um, but now, you know, I, I don't have a normal sense of smell, but I smell basically every day and some days so much because I have healed it. 
it, um, the connection, even though I was told it could never come back, when you sever that olfactory bulb right there in your brain, um, through meditation and through my conception of self, through my I am statements, those affirmations, not, not, I'm not talking like, you know, this repetition of something without power, I mean owning it inside myself. Um, yeah, seven, seven or eight years after critical head injuries, my sense of smell started coming back. So, yeah, I, that's my story. And people deserve to hear this information. And I've spoken on stage um, and met countless, countless people, dozens and dozens of people that I'll, I'll call friends for the rest of my life that have also healed themselves of the unimaginable and even incurable diseases and horrific trauma as well, like I sustained. So, yeah, that's it, guys. If you want to know more, just hit me up. Um, I'm rewriting 45 seconds at the moment. It's basically done. But the, some of the stuff that I just didn't quite have the courage to put in there last time, I'm just going for it this time. So shoot me a message. I'll get you a copy of the ebook totally free once it's done. All right, peace.